system of streams, swamps, and lagoons. This is the Okavango Delta. Here, more than 480 species of birds make their homes. The Okavango's water provides for bird life that couldn't survive without it. As well as large herds of Africa's mega herbivores. Buffalo must drink at least once a day. So most of the Kalahari is uninhabitable to these large grazers. They gather here in herds of hundreds, finding all the water they need, even after the annual floods recede. But they dare not wade too deep. Danger lurks in these waters. Nile crocodiles can grow to more than 16 feet long and weigh up to a ton. These powerful carnivores ambush drinking prey from beneath the surface. But powerful jaws can be menacing to more than just their prey. A youngster has strayed onto an adult male's turf and provoked an attack. The battle-hardened veteran has only half of his upper jaw, but it's enough to hold fast on his opponent. He takes a few deep breaths to prepare himself for an explosion of energy. His powerful shakes would tear the flesh from a mammal carcass. But the young crocodile's armor of scales resists. And the stalemate continues. The old male is strongest in the water. He prepares himself again. This time, the youngster bites back. In the frenzy, he escapes. The scarred old male blows bubbles of aggression. Eventually, he emerges to warm himself on the bank and regain his energy. He has asserted his dominance among the crocodiles. But even he isn't boss in the Okavango swamps. This title belongs to the hippopotamus. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
Bulls can weigh more than three tons, and they have mighty jaws of their own. Hippos spend the night grazing on land, eating up to 90 pounds of grass. During the day, they stay submerged, escaping the hot sun. And water lilies make a great snack to get them to dinner time. Mostly aquatic, hippos rely on the delta's surface water as a suitable habitat. And flat, sandy soils allow them to walk along the bottom of swamps at relatively constant depths. It's a banquet for the world's biggest land mammal, the African elephant. A mature elephant bull eats around 660 pounds of food a day. He feeds on a huge variety of plant matter. And even the fibrous papyrus stems are on the menu. Thanks to the Okavango's abundant greenery, in this wet corner of the Great Kalahari, elephants thrive in high concentrations. As this giant moves, his disturbance provides a feast for a smaller companion. A cattle egret can snap up insects flushed from the grass, taking advantage of a feast on a smaller scale. Insects are an important source of food for many of the delta's birds, including hornbills of the red-billed and yellow-billed varieties. But there is another hornbill here that needs more than insects to get by. The southern ground hornbill is as big as a turkey. They spend their days patrolling territories of up to 38 square miles on foot looking for food. This group's territory includes part of one of the delta's large islands. The flood water doesn't reach here, but despite the dryness, there is food to be found. Hornbills will eat anything from insects to reptiles and even small mammals. This leopard tortoise is in danger. Hornbills have cornered him. But they can't remove him from his shell. tortoise survives the ordeal, and the birds move off to hunt elsewhere. With enough territory on the delta's dry islands, the hornbills can find all they need. 
for another of the area's iconic predators, the daytime strategy is very different. This young leopard has recently gained independence from her mother. The delta's tall trees provide her with excellent lookout points. From here, she can keep an eye out for prey. And another group of youngsters nearby would do well to be wary. A family of baboons is moving through the undergrowth. Theirs is a relatively easy life, surrounded by the delta's lush abundance. Leopards are the biggest threat to the troop. But she does most of her hunting under the cover of darkness. With the troop's big males on guard, she won't risk an attack in broad daylight. Instead, she will take the time to rest. And the young baboons can play without concern. In this wet wonderland, all manner of creatures thrive, but only Africa's most hardy can survive beyond the limits of the oasis. In the height of the dry season, the south of the Kalahari has very little in the way of greenery, and even less surface water. Living hundreds of miles from the Delta's oasis, another family of baboons must be resourceful to get by. But even here, they can find enough to sustain themselves. These omnivorous primates have incredibly varied diets, eating everything from grass and bark to insects and small mammals. Dexterous hands allow them to pick exactly what they're after from the foot of an acacia tree. Baboons are one of the few mainly terrestrial species of monkey. There are no slouches when it comes to climbing. The acacia tree is a jungle gym for the youngsters' games. Despite the desolate appearance of their habitat, the troop is healthy enough to expend excess energy playing. The tree has a deep tap root that reaches water far below the ground. This allows it to grow new shoots, food for the baboons in even the toughest of times. Trees like this are crucial to a variety of life in the Kalahari. including its avian predators. The talons of a Varro's eagle owl are strong enough to lift its own weight in prey. It hunts by night and sleeps the hot day away in the treetops. While the eagle owl rests, other raptors are on the prowl. A southern pale chanting goshawk swoops down on prey from high branches.
While it eats its latest kill, someone else pays close attention. A crimson-breasted shrike is eager for a cheap meal in the challenging dry times. The goshawk isn't phased by a smaller bird, and it's unlikely there'll be leftovers. As the wind starts to blow through the Kalahari's grasses once again, relief for the parched land is on its way. Finally, rain brings some moisture to the land. The Kalahari's plants will grow rapidly and feed the animals that need them most. As the clouds break and the morning sun returns, the Kalahari bathes in new light. For all life here, the brief downfall has spurred a timely boost in food supplies. And they all cash in, taking advantage of sudden plenty in a dry land. For the meerkat family, this is a gift at a crucial time. Every day brings the pups nearer to fending for themselves. The rain has brought with it a flush of insect activity. Feeding the pups, as they gain confidence and experience. Some will eventually leave to join new families. But the pack will remain strong, working together to raise one generation after the next. In its immense expanse, the Kalahari is far more than a barren desert. Life of all forms thrives here. In a land underscored by sand, rocks provide crucial refuge. And a mighty river floods far and wide. This provides abundance for some, while elsewhere the hardy must make use of what's on offer. This is a land of variety, filled with many faces.
a collage of life and landscapes that make up the colorful kaleidoscope, which is the great Kalahari.